For today's algorithm, we're going to be discussing all the splay tree operations, which will include insertion, deletion, and search. So before we get into that, let's quickly recall the splay tree. The splay tree is a self-balancing binary search tree with the additional property that recently accessed elements are quick to access again. This property, of course, is maintained by splaying after each operation. Now, splaying is the action of bringing re recently accessed node to the root of the tree. So this naturally will bring all nodes close to the recently accessed node, close to the root of the tree. In our last video, we talked about the differences between bottom-up splay versus top-down splay. But as a quick recap, bottom-up splay is when we start from the node that we want to make the root of our tree and traverse upwards from there, while top-down splay has a start at the root of the tree and make rotations from the root until we reach the node that we want as our root. So after that quick recap, we can now start to talk about the operations. If you want to learn more about those bottom-up versus top-down splays and their differences, you can click the title card in the right-hand corner to view our video on that. We're going to assume that you saw that. So let's first talk about search. So searching using bottom-up splay basically works as first performing a binary search tree search. And then after we found the node that we want, we're going to use bottom-up splay algorithm to splay that node to the root. On the other hand, search for the top-down splay is going to work by searching and splaying simultaneously. This is because we're starting from the root anyway. So splaying from the root means we have to search for the node as we go along regardless. So now that we quickly discussed how those two work, let's give an example. We've already discussed splay for both in our other video, but we're gonna recap it here anyway. So let's, as an example, splay 80 or search for 80, which will eventually make us splay it as well. So using the bottom up splay first, what we have to do is use a binary search tree search to find our node. So we're gonna start at 50. We're gonna move rightwards because we are larger than 50, leaving us at 60. Again, we're gonna move rightwards because we're larger than 60, leaving us at 70. We're still larger than 70, so we're gonna move rightwards. And we land on 80, so we've found our node. So the first part of our algorithm has finished. We've searched using binary search tree search for our node. But now we have to splay it to the root. So we're gonna use the bottom up splay using parent pointers for this one. So first thing we have to do is evaluate what kind of rotation we need to make. In this case, we have to make a zigzag rotation because to reach 60, we are twice down the right side of the tree. So we're gonna first rotate the grandparent 60, leaving us with a subtree rooted at 70, with the right child 80 and left child 60. And then we're going to, once again, and of course 60 maintaining its left child. And then we're going to rotate 70 once again, leaving us with a subtree rooted at 80, with a left child 70, with a left child 60, and a left child 55. Now that we have 80 one level below the root, we need to reevaluate what kind of rotation we need to make. Looks like we need to make a zig rotation here. So we're just going to do one left rotation at 50, bringing 80 to the root of our tree, its left child 50 with its right child, the subtree rooted at 70 with its corresponding left subtree and 50's left subtree remaining the same. So that is the result of our search using bottom up splay. But now let's take a look at search using top down splay. Now, as I said, we're gonna to have to splay and search simultaneously. So we're going to immediately start splaying from the root. We first wanna evaluate if we need to make a zigzag or a zigzag. We're gonna to look to the right of 50 and we notice that we are still larger than 60. So we're gonna to look to the right again and we realize that we have to make a zigzag. So what we're going to do is bring 70 to the root of the tree and then attach the subtree rooted at 60 to the left header because we're smaller, 
with 60s right child being 50, 50s left child remaining the same, and 50s right child being 55. Now that we have the subtree rooted at 70 with the right child 80 as the root of our tree, we now just need to make a zig. The zig will bring 80 to the root of our tree. It's going to append 70 to the left header. So 70 is going to become the right child of 60 in our left header. And our center tree is just going to be the node 80. Once we're at this stage where we have the node that we want to display at the root of our tree, it is time to recombine the left header, the right header, and the center tree. So to do that, we're going to make our root 80. We're going to make its left child the left header, so that's going to be the subtree rooted at 60, with right child 70, left child 50, right child 55 of 50, and so on. So as you'll notice, Using the bottom up display and using the top down display actually resulted in two different trees here, even for search, because the displays were to result in different trees. But now let's take a look at insertion. So let's first discuss insertion with bottom up display. Now, insertion with bottom up display is going to be kind of similar in that we first have to perform a binary search tree insertion. And then after we've inserted the node, we're going to use a bottom up display in order to bring that node to the root of the tree. So for this example, or actually for top down display, we're gonna have to do something a little more complicated than the last one. We're going to first splay, the last access node will then be splayed to the root. Then we're gonna compare the root with the element we want to insert. If the ins element that we want to insert is greater than the root, then we're going to attach the old root's right subtree to the new root's right child and the tree of the old root become the left subtree of the inserting node. Of course, we would have to do the opposite if in the opposite case. If the root of our tree after splaying is equal to the node that we want to insert, then we're just going to do nothing because here at Sharp CS, we treat these trees as sets. So as an example of bottom-up splay insertion, let's insert 65 into this tree on the left. So to do this, we're going to have to first use the binary search tree insertion algorithm to bring 65 into this tree. We notice that we are greater than 50, so we're going to move rightwards. We are greater than 60, so we're going to move rightwards once again. We are smaller than 70, but 70 doesn't have a left child, so this is where we append 65 to this tree. Now it's time to do the splay algorithm for our bottom-up splay that we've talked about. So since we start at 65 at the bottom of the tree, we need to first evaluate what operations we need to take in order to bring 65 to the place where 60 is. We need to make a zigzag here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go first a right rotation at 70, bringing 65 to the root with its left child being 70 and its 70's left child being 80. And then we're going to have to do a left rotation at 60 bringing 65 to the root of that subtree, 60 to the left of it, 55 to the left of that, and 70 and 80 to the right of 65. Now, 65 is one level below the root of the tree. So now we're going to reevaluate what operation we need to take here. We notice that we have to make a zig because we're one level below our root. So we're going to do one left rotation of 50, bring 65 to the root of the entire tree, 50 as its left child. We're going to append the original left child of 65, the subtree rooted at 60, to the right of 50, meaning 55 is left child, 60, 55 is its left child. 50's left child is going to remain the same, rooted at 20. And 65 is a right child. It's going to be its original right child rooted at 70. So we've seen this before. But now let's take a look at top down display insertion. This is going to be a little more interesting and a little more different than the other display algorithms. So first thing we're going to want to do is splay. So we're going to call splay on 65. This is going to make us first evaluate 
what kind of rotations we need to make initially. We're going right and right because we are greater than 50 and greater than 60. So we first are going to do a zig zig. The zig zig is going to bring 70 to the root of our tree. And it's going to append to the left header, the subtree rooted at 60 with left child 50. 70's right child is going to remain as 80 and 50's right child is going to be 55. Now we want to see which, what is the next operation we need to make for the display. We noticed that there is no operation left to make, so we're going to recombine this tree. So we're going to get a tree that's rooted at 70, with left child being the left header, and right child being 80. The left he header's associated subtree remains the same. But now, we want to insert 65 into this tree. We're going to first notice that 65 is smaller than 70. So what we need to do in this case is break off 70 left child. We're going to make 65 the root of our tree. We're going to make the subtree rooted at 70, it's right child. And we're going to make the subtree rooted at 60, it's left child. And what you're going to notice here once again is that the resulting tree is different from the resulting tree of the bottom up split. So now let's discuss deletion in both cases. So to begin, deletion, when we talk about bottom up split, is going to work similarly to the other two, where we first perform a binary search tree search, then splay that node to the root of the tree. Once we've done that, we have to then delete the node from the tree and choose to set either the left subtree or the right subtree as our new root. If we choose the right subtree, we have to splay its minimum to the root of the tree and then just simply attach the left subtree as its left child. However, if we choose the left subtree, we need to splay its maximum to the root of the tree and just choose the right subtree to be its right child. Now for top down splay. For top down splay, we just have to splay the deleting node to the top and then use the same deletion as we just discussed in the bottom up splay. So now that we have these two algorithms, let's take a look at an example deletion. So in our situation here, we're going to delete 55 from the tree on the left. So starting with bottom up splay, we're going to notice that we want to make a right and then a left or a zig zag in order to bring this node to the root of our tree. So the zigzag operation is going to bring 55. First, it's going to bring 55 to the root of the subtree, rooted at, currently rooted at 60. That's gonna be a tree rooted at 55 with left, right subtree 60. And then we're gonna to have to do a left rotation at the root of 50 bringing 55 to the root of the whole tree, 50 as its left child, 60 as its right child with its corresponding right subtree, and 50's left and subtree remaining the same, and its right subtree containing nothing. So that's the splay for the bottom up splay, and now we need to actually delete this node from the tree. So to do this, we're gonna choose the right subtree, just to make our lives easier. We're going to first have to make sure that the minimum of the right subtree is at the root. Now it happens to be that the minimum is at the root since the minimum is 60, so we don't have to do any splay here. Now we just simply attach the left subtree to the left child of our current root. So the left subtree of 60 is going to be 50 with its corresponding left subtree, we're doing it at 20. And 60's right subtree is going to remain the same. Now let's take a look at deletion with the top-down splay. Now deletion in this case, we have to once again evaluate what kind of operation we need to make here. We notice that we have to go right and then left or otherwise, or otherwise known as making a zigzag. So we're going to have to first bring 55 to the root of this tree and a, append 
the subtree rooted at 50 to the left header, which contains the node 55, and the subtree rooted at 60 to the right header, which contains a right subtree rooted at 70 with right child 80. So now that we have 55 as the root of our center tree, we need to now merge these headers with our tree once again. So what we'll end up with is 55 as the root with the left header as its left subtree and the right header as its right subtree. Now all that's left is to delete in the same way that we deleted up above. So what we have to do is break off the left and right subtree. We're going to choose the right subtree to be our new root once again. We have to display the minimum of the right subtree to the root. The minimum is 60 and it's already at the root, so we don't have to do anything there. So our new tree has a root of 60 with a right subtree rooted at 70. And it's left subtree rooted at 50 and contain the same left subtree as before with no changes. So what you noticed in this case, the two splays actually gave the same resulting tree. Now this is just a coincidence, but though they don't always have to be different. Anyway, if you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Share with all your friends, family, cousins, extended family, your neighbors, anybody that you come in contact with. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.